Hello everyone and welcome back to Talk No Jutsu Quarantine Edition. Hi everybody. Yeah, I mean this is, you know, this is here just to kind of reminisce. We want to talk about, you know, the last year, year and a half kind of just the entire podcast, I guess. Like why it yeah. came to, like the, the oh, phases I mean, it went through. I mean, shit, we we started this podcast and our first episode was something that we really didn't universally like, and it took like three months to get edited, get edited, and go up. And you can see like our little Discord icons and all of Realm's servers and friends on it. And the audio is terrible. And I think only only you and I were in the same room. No, we was weren't. It? No, the the first time we recorded, um, Realm and Vorn were called in, and you were with me. I think. Was I with you? I don't think oh, I was. Oh, no, I don't think you were. Because I was Shit. recording on AirPods speakers. Yeah. Oh, was that back in, like, 2018 or 2019? 2019. It or was late 2019. Late, yeah, late That's 2019. That's when we started the podcast. Um, three quarters of the way through 2019, I guess. I think we recorded the episode in June or July, and it got published in August. Yeah, because it took us a while to get back to it. And it's... Yeah. This one was sitting around for a fair Because we kind of waited... At the time, we had tried to see if Realm could edit, but he was also very busy at the time. I think he had just yeah. got his new job. I yeah, he got a new job and all that kind of stuff. And, you know, editing it takes a lot of time. I mean, you've noticed even in our recent, like, couple of... Even in the last year, there have been several times that I haven't been completely caught up on editing just because I've had school and other things going on in my life. So it's it's a little rough when it's kind of something you're doing on the side as a hobby cuz obviously we're not getting paid for this. We're doing no, this for fun. We don't even care I don't care if our, that our viewership tends to be extremely low. No, but as... you know what? It's always super nice when someone leaves like a nice comment. Not even yeah. a nice comment. I love talking with people who know more about the shows than we do, mm-hmm. who have like a greater understanding of the world. We have a couple of subscribers who actually leave these long kind of essay comments. So we have are... like a subscriber who watches every one of our index videos and, and one who watches all of our Kitek videos yeah and um our first our second video ever overlord got a super long essay comment that actually told us some stuff about the world that we didn't know i don't know if that subscriber will see our new overlord video but i'm kind of happy to get back to it because of that yeah hopefully they will i'd like to think that they'd enjoy it and we finally broke 30 subscribers yeah i Ooh. mean you know <laughs> if the, if the, if the, if the, uh, we're still getting so many views, though, from the Philippines on our Katekyo videos. <laughs> oh, one of them's inching up to 3,000 almost. I think it's interesting because in the early podcast days, the podcast, at least amongst the group, seemed very divisive, depending on the anime. Like, yeah, occasionally Overlord was really well received, but more often than not, it seemed like generally we didn't like each other's shit. Yeah, and it was interesting because in the first season, too, we did a more kind of we call it anarchy now we've renamed it in retro um you know canon changes to the plot um and it was really it was we put stuff into the random hat and then randomly pull and we always added more than we pulled so it was fair but it was completely random i think consequently and this showed up for seki first but later i think it started to weigh more on us as well it was like we weren't going to get the shows we wanted out and the show nor the shows we thought people would enjoy and then my biggest issue with it was um to anyone who watches the channel would know this and if you don't i am a big fan of super long running shonen i've seen pretty much all of the long running big shonens and even some of the smaller ones like i've seen some of my hero academia And so for me, only being able to put in 11 episodes of Naruto and not ever being able to, like, continue that on a random draw because I never got pulled again for Naruto, I mean, that's not a good showing of a show that's over 200 episodes. 11 is literally less than less than 5% of the overall runtime of that show, you know, as opposed to. You know, if Nick Nat got us got one of his 12 episode shows in, we watched all of it. Madoka Magica. Yeah, we watched all of it. And I think that was a big problem for me. I put in a lot of shows that were very long. I think it became clear around the time we put up that. Because I think that first talk on Jutsu was in season one that we uploaded mm-hmm. it. I think around then, that's when it became very clear we couldn't keep going on our system. Or at least if we did, it was going to specifically screw me over. The worst. Yeah. Because I have the longest running shows. And I think it's it's unfortunate because I genuinely think that some of the shows I've put in that are longer, the boys would enjoy if they could get a little more context of it. Really? The first three seasons are, like, the season we're going into is a reaction of the previous season, which is a reaction of the previous season. 
Yeah, they... and partway through season one, even, we edited the way that we drew, and instead we had taken all the anime in the hat, and at that time we were allowing multi-submissions to try to boost chances for getting stuff pulled yeah. out, and we took only the shows that had been submitted more than once, put them in a separate hat, and there were like, I think, ten of them or so, and we just went through all ten of those. We did that because that's when the, the pandemic hit. Yeah, and we we kind of had to... We had to move things along, because... We really, at that point, we knew we weren't going to meet for a bit, and we knew we didn't want to keep doing this indefinitely, because, look, it would have been a full year of us recording Yeah, remotely. I mean, let's say it was ten episodes that we recorded online in Pandemic, approximately. We did those, like, two for a cycle. Like, yeah. the cycle you guys were seeing episodes uploaded or should have been. Um, but even remember. that, if even with, uh, with us doing it two per week, right, that's still, you know, we it took us ten weeks. I mean, that's two and a half months of recording mm-hmm. alone in our rooms on Zoom calls. You know, in Realm's case, after binging both of the shows that morning after he got off work, or, you know, equally bad situations. And it was just so isolating. You know, it's it's hard to interact when you can't see each other's faces and expressions and all you can hear is their voice. I'm fairly certain there wasn't a break for the viewership, but for us there was a fair bit of time. where We, we just took, I think it was like a two-month break or a three-month break. Yeah. Because it, it, we needed it at that point. Yeah, we took some time. We, we had to just relax, stop watching the shows for the channel. I mean, I know all of us still watched our own shit, but we needed a break. It, it, was, it was bad. There, there was just, it came to a point, actually, right after Puella that came out this season when, I mean, Realm came to us and completely understandably at that point, he was the only one of the, three of, the four of us working. And so we had been meeting the three of us and him calling in. Because uh, it was hard to get testing. And I that was kind working, of thing. but I was working remotely. So. You were working remotely. He he can't work remotely. So unfortunately, we were cautious because he was the one with the most exposure to the potential exposure to the virus, and that was at. Its and they didn't the have uh, tests available constantly, and so after we recorded Puella, I mean, he just told us that he needed a break until we could meet back in person, which, honestly, I hadn't really thought about until more recently. But I can't imagine calling in and knowing that the other three members were able to kind of meet in person because I know I've had so many issues through quarantine with you know not wanting to be alone and that kind of thing so I mean it it's been a hard year this season you know I don't Mm -hmm. think any of us thought it was going to be this hard especially because we also changed formats this season doing five episodes instead of one splitting up our recordings um and that even those kind of went through changes I mean we pretty quickly realized that spoiler free wasn't necessarily a Working good segment on well. its own characters and storyline are almost impossible to separate in fact in our fate uh fate zero the second episode we ended up combining characters and storyline because we accidentally just kept talking through because it's one of those shows where you can't really separate the two no no you absolutely like, can't could you separate game of thrones characters from its story oh god no and it's structured very similarly exactly so it's that's part of why like, going into this season I guess Pride put this one up first because like, we're reviewing that year that's why we merged a few of the sections because like spoiler free didn't really need to stand alone from production value and story just didn't need to and sometimes couldn't stand alone from characters yeah and we were calling our final segment like free thoughts or final thoughts but oftentimes it's just tangents about what we forget um, talking about the upcoming anime, and later in the season, we started recommending shows. Which I think helps help that segment a fair bit, at least in my opinion. And I think it's nice to be able to think about other shows that you might enjoy if you liked this particular show from each of our perspectives, because we always think up different things, usually, although that um, <laughs> mistake of a villainess final, where there's a, like a two screens of lists in tiny writing of stuff <laughs> that Vorn and I suggested for you to read... Which I stand by. All oh, you should read them all, but that's a lot. <laughs> that's a lot. Also, I mean, I think we've all kind of, you know, a lot of us have changed over the course of this season. I know Realm doesn't binge as much at the last minute. You know, no, I think the last submission or the last TV submission, Goblin Slayer. He watched, he watched the... several days in advance. Yeah. Um, you know, I watch so much more seasonal now. So actually, I, I now have shows to, to put into the hat or suggestions that are 12 episodes. And that's groundbreaking for me, honestly. Um, 
it's so strange, especially because going forward this season, what you're going to see from me is perhaps not a showing of the fact that I've gotten really into seasonal anime because I'm only putting in continuations of the long series that I haven't been able to do the last couple, you know, the last year and a half, two years or so. But like, if you see her submissions into Random Hat, it's a it's lot wild. Of it's wild. Also, if anyone ever wants like the Random Hat document up as like viewable and non editable, I'm totally willing to put that up in our video descriptions. Just let me know because it it is absolutely wild. It is literally just every plan we possibly have our schedule. We have plans for future seasons. Look noted in there also i'm i'm so excited for a more um more consistent rando polls because the random hat is genuinely so eclectic at this point because i mo miss mostly. the anarchy a little bit yeah and i think a lot of it on my part is because now i am putting in like completely random small shows that i find here and there or i read and i also started doing this thing at barnes nobles where i go to barnes nobles and i just take pictures of books where the covers look interesting like mangas and then i come home and read them um, and oh boy, have I found some interesting things. And the funny part is usually Vorn already knows them and loves them. <laughs> Vorn and I share a lot more of the similar tastes now that I've started watching seasonal stuff and reading more, uh, web novels and light novels. I don't know if I'd say if any of my, of uh, watching habits have changed. I think that's partly because I was the one at the forefront, like, stop binging. It's only going to make the show worse for you or maybe you'll like it. But, and if you liked it, you were going to be fine binging it from the beginning. Yeah, but you've had a surprisingly good couple seasons of uh, seasonal. Like, you've had a couple full seasons recently. I mean, mine have been fuller because I try a lot more yeah. random things, but you've had several very full seasons. Well, that tends to be because I just have that. I mean, you'll see, you see it if you see the size matter, but my taste in shows tends to be more concise. Mm -hmm. Whereas longer shows, the longer it goes on, the more chances it has to really lose me, mm -hmm. I think. Not that a short show doesn't ever lose me. Lose and we've had it. some real winners coming out. Like, Fruits Basket is finishing, the new one. Shaman mm -hmm. King has just started coming out. Hint, hint, that's when we're filming this. Um, I have at least, I think I counted, I've got at least five or six shows just this season. And it's a summer, so it's a shorter season anyways. You know, less anime coming out right now. She's probably watching more <laughs> seasonal than I am at this point. I think I have, like, three series that I just finished for the season. Oh, and I found some absolute winners that I can't wait till they actually get into our... Till somebody puts them in for us to watch. Like, oh, I can't wait till someone puts in slime. The slime isekai. Oh, that's going to be great. There's some really great stuff to look forward to, honestly. Um, even if it just comes out of rando. Because mm -hmm. right now, rando, I think I've done the latest calculations. About 75% approximately of what's in rando is stuff I am actively excited for. Which is far higher than it's ever been. Of course, there is a not insignificant portion of stuff I'm absolutely dreading. Probably about 10% of the remaining 15. Being <laughs> fair, though, that last TV submission, Goblin Slayer, you were dreading. Yeah, that was in my absolute nose in terms of what I didn't want to watch. And you ended up quite enjoying it for what I it was. I did. It was very surprising, honestly. I think it just goes to show that, you know... Give things a chance. <laughs> a weird coming from me, but I did win most of I don't uh, know. After movies, I think it's becoming a little less weird coming from you as opposed to me. Oh, <laughs> uh, movies are interesting. That was, I don't think I gave a single approval to any movie this no, season. No, you did not. <laughs> and the movie, the movie like festival was my idea. Mm -hmm. Although we did have some great movies. All right. Mm. Some of them not Garden of Sinners. <laughs> not Persona. Not Persona. Which, of course, is in no way related to the video game franchise or any other Persona. Just Persona 3. I mean, it is related to the franchise. But, but I mean, the, like, yeah. my rating is not. Yeah. My opinion on it is not. We're working on that. <laughs> Eventually. Yeah. Oh, but, you know, I'm, I'm glad that we're coming out of quarantine, finally. I mean, I hope I don't jinx it. I mean, there's always months for us to backslide. But the world is opening back up. I think we're... Finally, maybe figuring out what to do with the global pandemic. God, I hope this doesn't happen again. Yeah, don't be good. I know, now, this is terrible. Knock on wood. Knock on wood all the time. But, I don't know. I think this year has been both productive and unproductive, you know? 
I mean, obviously, I our editing quality has gone up at least a little bit, especially going into this episode and going forward since I've moved programs. I think we're starting to figure ourselves out structure-wise, too. It's getting more solid. We're making less drastic changes as we move forward. We're keeping yeah. some of the same segments, just... It's like season one. We had to change that part way through. Because... Yeah, because we were doing episode by episode, and that is not... It was more of a review than a, than a discussion so much. Um, which often led to some really long episodes as we went off on tangents. I mean, um, Snafu, Ooh. oh dear, excuse me, Snafu came out to over an hour and uh, our Naruto episode is an hour and 20 minutes. Like that, that's a long time to talk about only 11 episodes of Naruto. <laughs> we're also moving into like much better technical, like we're using Audacity instead of recording via Zoom, which is... Oh, oh God! There, you know what? I didn't even realize till I went to edit like the last batch. Uh, Zoom has been absolutely peaking our audio, so apologies for anything you watch that may have come out in the last two months or so. Um, there is literally no way for me to fix that, even in DaVinci or or Audacity. As we get better, hopefully, our um, the, the tools we use mean that we're a little bit less screwed when something goes wrong. Yeah, I mean, it's a learning curve, and like I said, I mean, I don't have any sort of real real editing know-how. I mean, no. I started editing on Chromecastify, and then I used ClipChamp for most of this season, and now I'm finally moving to Audacity, although we did upgrade uh, mic quality um, about nine episodes ago. I mean, we've done that like three times this series. Actually, this only, podcast. well, yeah, because when we moved to in person, we switched to a snowball. And yeah. now we're working with a Yeti. Not sponsored, of course, but... It's... There was a point where we didn't have... Right, did we have the... No, we had the mic and then we had headphones around during the... the oh, yeah, we had this little, the like... The partial hy- the hybrid. Yeah, this little, like, five-piece plug-in aux cord where we'd all plug in our headphones so we didn't get reverb or feedback, but then the mic was also sitting in front of the computer, so we were hearing Realm through our headphones... And speaking into our mic while he spoke into his, that way we wouldn't catch his voice doubled on Zoom. That being said, if we ever did another anime OP challenge and we wanted to keep the OP silent, that'd be a good way of doing it. Yeah, yeah, that would be, honestly, better than trying to sing it. You guys will never see that episode. Not unless we get a Patreon. God, that lost episode. <laughs> oh, not unless we get a Patreon, boys. Also, now that, um, now that the world is going a little bit back to normal, we'll be able to start doing some more uh, specials. That might move our move itself back into our routine as personal content and that kind of mm-hmm. thing, because um, we can do more specials now, just because we can meet up more easily, um, and it's easier to organize specials. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I've already been planning like potential specials we can do in the future. We you might see specials again just to pad out some time for Seki. Yeah, yeah, especially around finals week. If I was getting paid, maybe I'd care more, but <laughs> for now, class is Trump uh, podcast editing. Stay in school. Yeah. I, it's interesting, though. I mean, surprisingly, I'm learning a lot, you know, just about, you know, working with, you know, podcasting equipment and how to do videos, editing. I feel like over the course of the podcast, I've gotten a lot more confident in just speaking. I actually, so I took a speech class mm-hmm. in the fall, and um, we had to give our final speech, and it was supposed to be a 10-minute speech, right? And I didn't get an A. I got a B. I got an 87. Because my professor docked me 13 points, because I spoke for 25 minutes without realizing. <laughs> um, and I, I had made the comment about being on a podcast, and one of the girls in class was like, yeah, I can really tell that you do like a talk-style podcast. And the teacher was like, yeah, that ran 25 minutes. And I was like, oh, God, I should have set a timer. <sighs> for me, I think the podcast, because I had a job interview. I'm not going to say for what, but I think being able to speak on the podcast and being a little more confident in what I'm saying, or at least being able to talk out of my ass a little bit better, mm-hmm. helped me in that immensely. Yeah. And, you know, it's, you know, we started this podcast because we were, we, we were friends in high school. The yeah. four of us. And we all kind of moved on to college and we went to two different colleges and a couple of us didn't go to college at first and we're all on different schedules and different uh, majors. And it was kind of a way to, to stay together, to keep, keep something in common so that we could keep talking and hanging out and not grow apart as, as easily as you can when moving into college if you're not sharing so many classes and mm-hmm. campuses and that kind of thing. 
Um, and it's really done that. In fact, I think I'm closer to Realm uh, and Vorn than I've ever been after doing the podcast for a while. Um, but not me, no, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously. <laughs> oh. But, um, gosh. When it started, it was just that. We just wanted to be able to find an outlet to shoot the shit with our friends. Make yeah. it force each other to watch the anime we keep saying people should watch and then they never do. I, I love how it's evolved so that we're almost not, like, we're not always suggesting stuff that we think each other should watch. Like, sometimes we have, like, hate suggestions, you know, where people put in stuff like, I know Realm's done it in the hat and I've seen them, but he puts in stuff that he knows that we'll all hate. Just because he thinks it'd be a fun discussion. Yeah. I certainly do that. Yeah, and Vorn puts in a lot of stuff that he's never seen to kind of force himself to watch it when it comes out of the hat. Um, and I put in so many new things that I've seen now instead of just putting in the same kind of old shows again and again. Like, I haven't even finished my heritage submissions yet. I'm like three down still. Like, there are some shows that aren't in the hat that people would be very surprised that they aren't in the hat yet because they're on my heritage list and they just haven't gone in. I guess we've never said that on the podcast, but there's just a list that we gave everyone of shows they had to submit at some point. Yeah, each of us had a list. Some was longer than others. Originally, I had the longest list, actually, because I had the least amount of shows I was going to submit. Because I really only had, like, the long-form shonens that I used to love. Like, I don't think Haruhi Suzumiya isn't had at all yet. Oh, God, no. That was not on my list, and I would not put it in. I think it's on <sighs> Realms. I think it's on Realms. But he got quite a few things, like, uh, like that sort of thing. Mm-hmm. Where he kind of got whatever, whenever... But also, now that I'm kind of running out of anime a bit, you might see weird stuff like that from me going into the hat. Well, let's see. So what, I still have one, two, three, four, five, six. I still have eight, actually. Oh, I my. haven't checked recently, but... I, so you know what's still not in the hat, ladies and gentlemen? Dragon Ball hasn't gone in the hat yet. I don't think I've put in Inuyasha. Hunter Hunter isn't. I had Cowboy Bebop. Cowboy Bebop hasn't gone in the hat. Bleach, Yu-Gi-Oh, Gundam, no Saint Seiya. All of my series that went from Heritage went in, so Digimon is in the fucking hat. Oh god, I think Attack on Titan's in there from someone. It's me, I think. Oh god, yeah, there there are some absolutely... Because we, we did sit down to do a list of... And when we say Heritage anime, we mean... It's like we forced each other. Like, these are anime that we probably would have submitted anyways. And of, and of course, we got to pick our own. Like, we didn't yeah. just get assigned them. But when we say Heritage anime, we mean anime that are kind of like like pillars of the American anime community, at the very least. Like, they're mm -hmm. the shows that everyone has either heard of or seen or generally agrees, you know, started some sort of trend. Um, or that kind of thing. Um, some of my ones that have already gone in, I had One Piece. I had Sailor Moon. I had Full Metal Alchemist. Who was not going to put in Full Metal Alchemist? I mean, Full Metal yeah. Alchemist is a classic. That would have ended up in there eventually. Exactly. But there are some things like, someone had to put in Pokemon. Yeah, and someone had to put Attack on Titan in, and it was not going to be me. And honestly, I don't think any of us have actually seen... I finished the first season. Oh, okay. I was pretty lukewarm okay. on it. So you, you have seen the first season, but you're the only one then. Probably, I think. I don't. Realm might have seen it. I don't think he has. But we all love the openings, so it's super easy to recognize them. You don't understand how many days have been just hangouts of us sitting in a living room listening to OP challenges. If I have to hear another one, I'm going to rip my oh, ears out. Man, we barely do those anymore because we either know them so well or the only ones we miss are the same ones we miss every time and we're just never going to learn them at this point. It was fun at first because we were like getting new series. Like, I found a couple series from it. Yeah, or I found out that like while I've not seen Parasite, I frigging love the Parasite opening. I think it's incredibly peppy and fun. It was a good menu for us for, to find shows to submit that we haven't seen yet but were popular. Or maybe even remember stuff that we didn't, you know, remember kind of got brought back to our mind by hearing an opening. Um, and we got really good at guessing some of them. Although there was this one notable time when I mixed up, what was it, Attack on Titan and something else that sounded similar to Attack something on Titan. Like that. And you can never seem to get Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood. I can never get Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood because they either start in the middle and I can't recognize it from the middle or the submission doesn't cover enough for them to get to that climax in like the first 15 seconds. And this is why the singing episode will never see the light. <laughs> oh god, we're terrible. 
but yeah, no, it's it's been a it's been a lot of changes. I'm looking forward to moving forward with a more solid schedule that includes more personal content. Hopefully, a lot more people will be interested in some of the more personal content that's more specific about certain shows. You know, content that can act like a guide into shows or topics. It's interesting because by being a hobby channel, that's weeks behind on editing mm -hmm. compared to like we're not editing and uploading it the same week that we edited it. It means that we can't really hop on top of trends like an like seasonal anime. As well. Yeah, because we we started the season with Ishizoku, and we actually filmed the Ishizoku episode when it was a big popular thing. But I think it it didn't go up for like two months, mm -hmm. and by the time it went up, the hype had died down because the show ended. We watched Ishizoku like a week after it ended, basically. Yeah, it was really unfortunate because that could have really gotten us maybe some clicks in the algorithm, but. So. Even if we pick more timely shows, it, 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 it doesn't help us much because it could be three, four to six weeks before it goes up. Yeah, but at the same time, that three, four to six weeks, it really is a, a good backlog for if something happens. Like, genuinely, we talked about them earlier, or was it in the season finale, Trash Taste? Mm -hmm. I think we're on a similar schedule to them, but they're not trying to be an anime podcast. Yeah, they're much. they're more of a talk show. So they, if they're behind on, because even if they record episodes far ahead of time, they're not to worry about being timely with us. That's our only means of traction. Yeah, is so if we hit a fan base. I mean, hopefully, going forward with personal content, you know, maybe some of us will be willing to do some seasonal more content focused on like what we're watching for the season and why i'm hoping with the personal content we can get some easy stuff done for seki to throw through the editing and get out yeah because we don't record film at the moment no no um and uh, you know as always my my kind of philosophy on editing is you know if you give me images to put on a video you know or tell me what you want it to look like i can do that i just i can't draw animations or that kind of thing. I'm not great at that. Although, you know, maybe I'll look into seeing about making icons for the four of us that light up when we talk or something. Yeah, I mean, we, we do yeah. want to improve our quality as time goes on. At least make it a little easier for you to hear who's who, giving yeah. opinions. I know Realm and I sound a little bit similar. Yeah, <laughs> and I know I'm the easiest to tell apart. <laughs> <laughs> the girl. <laughs> uh, but and Vorn's pretty distinctive. Yeah, Vorn's pretty distinctive. But, I mean, you know, in the end, we're doing this for ourselves, and if mm -hmm. it also happens to hit home with someone else, we're really glad, you know? Mm -hmm. Even, you know what, even a shout-out to that person who left 33 comments on our Naruto video. It was an hour and 20-minute video, and he sat there, watched the entire thing, and left 33 consecutive comments on the video. Each was, like, at least a paragraph or two long. That was one angry boy. I don't think he was necessarily angry. I think a lot of the comments just kind of came down to what we didn't mention and the fact that he kept asking why we didn't go more than 11 episodes, which, I mean, that's kind of our rule, 12 to 17 episodes, because we're watching it in two weeks, and we and have lives, unfortunately. This isn't yeah. our paid job. We're not we in high school more. anymore. We don't have an infinite amount of time. Some of us have day jobs, schooling. Mm -hmm. It's... So it's, it's just one of those things. Like, we are limited in the time scope, which is why I think personal content will come across pretty interesting, because they can be on a slightly more accelerated timeline. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like, this is probably not going to be too... Like, it's, this will probably go up first, so it's not going to be on too big of a cooldown. Yeah, so, I mean, we'll, we'll see you as we move forward with more Talk No Jutsus. Mm -hmm. uh, episodes, personal content, really just everything. I guess after this, you should expect to hear Talk No Jutsu's, uh, the ones we recorded before this. So uh, good luck working out that timeline. Try harder, everyone. 